He can do a triple toe loop off of just about any uh, Emmanuel Sandu from the Canadian Figure Skating Championships this past weekend. Joining us is Rob Sinclair. And Emmanuel will, uh, it looks like, not be going to the Olympics. The Canadian Olympic Association has turned down his bid, even though he finished second. And we have uh, three available spots to go to the Olympics. Uh, they say he's not uh, done the, the requirements in other, um, other events, and he wasn't able to uh, participate in that because he was sick. So he's kind of... Kind of stuck. He's just a young kid, too, 17. The criteria is you have to get two top six finishes right. during a championship series. The problem was he had knee surgery during that series, and as a result, he wasn't able to meet the criteria standards because, hey, you can't do a toe loop without one leg, you know? So in that respect, I think it's a real crock. The Olympic Association is there to, to operate in the best interest of of an athlete and and this is a kid who when Elvis Stoiko turns pro will be leading Canada into the millennium by 2002 he is expected to be a medal contender this would be hugely incredible valuable experience yeah. for the kid to get to get his feet with wet on the biggest sports stage in the world and they've denied him that possibility uh, it makes no sense we work so hard uh, to get these people into the Olympics and then uh, this kid is not allowed to go because he was hurt and he couldn't uh, participate uh, but uh, who did participate and will go to the Olympics Shailen Bourne Victor Kratz they are, in a word, unbelievable. Absolutely remarkable. They are expected to be a medal contender. In fact, they've, they're, they're shooting for gold, simple as that. And if the European block bias that has become so uh, prevalent among the judging is, is able to see it their way, I think they're going to do really well. You know how tough it is to get an, an ice dancing interview down at practice? It is unbelievable. It is unbelievable to get a quiet moment with these people. I'm going to run a little bit of tape and show you just how difficult it is. Take a look at this. It's something that we wanted to do kind of a year ago, basically, and it's just such a different direction than anyone else and something that's never been done on the ice before. Um, <laughs> do you want to make it going? Or... No, after that, we had to move them inside to the locker room, and sure enough, more problems. And uh, then the, to, to work with Colin was just to top it all off. Holy smokes. <laughs> you weren't taking it personally at this point, were you? <laughs> They are so gracious. What a they good are so wonderful. Pair, yeah. They're wonderful. They're they're two of my favorite people ever to interview, and uh, they handled it with with such a plum and dignity. It's just incredible because they're pulled and tugged everywhere, mainly because they've they've really raised the stakes in ice dancing. What they've done is they've spent the last three years preparing their long program for this moment to go for gold at the Olympics. They didn't feel it was there. They didn't feel that the judges were going to go their way. So they scrapped it all in October and decided to go with what they called a river dance program. It's, a, it's an Irish step dance uh, program that is probably the most difficult thing they've ever done. And what they felt was it was the only way they could break the European block bias among the judges. So they've decided to scrap what they've done for the last three years, develop this in October, and they went with it at the Canadian Figure Skating Championships. It was the most difficult thing they've done and the most successful. Let's take a look. Born and Kratz are dancing in a whole new direction. Gambling, their new program, River Dance, will mean gold at Nagano. As far as uh, technical risk, uh, it's, big. it's <laughs> big because nobody has ever done it. And uh, you know, if you go wrong, you win wrong. There's no turning back. And, but we're on the right track. Um, simply because uh, we do the fast footwork and we, we try to resemble what uh, Irish step dancing looks like on the floor but we don't actually do it on the ice because it's close to impossible simply because the boots are much heavier but um, it's very demanding physically demanding and, and you know one mistake and uh, you know you're off the music and the whole program just goes it's in like the air. It's like a domino effect if you have one thing wrong it can all go wrong because it is so fast and and it requires us to be in such strong shape and condition. Um, I think we both did such a um, strenuous workout this year before getting into the program. I did more sprinting. He's doing running, like biking, anything to keep in shape for this because it's, it's so intense and packed. So in that aspect, it is much more demanding than any program we've had before. Um, but I think it's, that's what makes it more of our signature program. It's the best we've had yet. Up to now, their signature had been athletic art, a desire to reaffirm ice dance as legitimate sport. From that came hydroblading. Instead of dancing upright, skating at angles. 
river dance combines both like never before. It's just a whole package of everything. And, and the whole point of doing that is to add difficulty to ice dancing, take it to another level and show the athletic side and at the same time the art side. Um, and I think that's what's so different about us compared to any other team in the world right now. Um, we do try to take it in a very athletic way. A most revolutionary way thereby raising the athletic stakes of ice dance. That's one thing about us, we've never pushed the rules. We've always been within the rules, but we've gone our own way. You know, tried something difficult, hard, and to me, that's what ice dancing is about. You need someone to lead and take dancing to a, a stronger level every single year. And no matter what anyone says, I think we're so proud of that. And I think the fans and the and Anybody watching, they know that. They know what's difficult and what isn't. And it's just obvious. And anything beyond that is some, out of our control. It really is. And we just have to keep pushing ourselves to the limit and not worry too much about it. Well, this may be the best thing they've ever done, maybe the, the worst thing they've ever done, depending on whether they can pull it off or not. It's a huge, huge risk, but given the reception they got at the Canadian mm -hmm. Figure Skating Championships, I got to think they, they could be in line for silver, which is one up, and perhaps the gold. Grishik and Platov are very traditional dancers. They're a Russian pair who seem favored for the gold. If the judges can see this cutting-edge program, which is incredibly technically difficult, if they can see that as, as kind of the new wave of ice dance, the new athletic art that these two are, are, are trying to instill into the sport, perhaps it will work in their favor. It's a huge gamble, but either way, it's great entertainment. Considering what they were doing at the Canadian Figure Skating Championships with this new program, they seem very at ease and very relaxed, and I'm sure the media were all were, were crazy <laughs> to get to them, but they seem relaxed, and not that they're doing this huge new thing, new number. For two kids, he's 26, she's 21. For two kids, they show more poise than any pair I've ever met, uh, except perhaps Klimova and Ponomarenko, who I think in a lot of people's minds are the greatest ever. So these two have a chance to be perhaps the greatest ever. Thank you very much to Rob, Triple South Cow Sinclair. <laughs> now let's go over to Mary.